All right, we good to go there, Naomi? Yes. All right. So we are uh, starting a new series today on angels. And we're going to uh, look at angels, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, all you need to know uh, from the Bible about angels. And uh, as we go through the lesson today, there's a lot of uh, misinformation uh, about angels uh, that are out there uh, today. And we need to know uh, what the Bible says. So I'm, I'm going to go over here in a second uh, why we need to study angels, because somebody might ask that question. You know, you know I, we, we could go, you know, we, we just finished up uh, this past summer, the book of James. You know, we can we can study another book or, you know, we can study something that uh, that that's in, in the current uh, news, uh, but we're going to see that uh, angels, uh, it's very important to understand uh, what, uh, you know, who angels are and, and what they do. Now, I was impressed uh, by a guy, and uh, I didn't even know uh, that he, he might have known the Bible, and he actually wrote a song. And uh, some of you guys uh, probably will, uh, as, as I read the words to this song, you probably will uh, recognize uh, the words uh, to this song. But uh, he starts off by saying, uh, I was born and raised down in Alabama on a farm way back in the woods. I was so raggedy uh, that folks used to call me Patches. Papa used to tease me about it because he, uh, deep down inside, he was hurt because he knew that he'd done all he could. Uh, my papa was a great old man. I could see him with a shovel in his hand. You see, education he never had. He did wonders when the times got bad. The little money from the crops he raised barely paid the bills uh, we made. And then uh, he says that one day his, uh, his papa called him to his dying bed. And with tears in his eyes, this is what he said. He said, Patches, I'm depending on you, son, to pull this family through. My son is all left up to you. Now, you're going to say, Pastor Glaze, what in the world uh, does that song have to do with angels? Now, you know, those of you who are around my age, you uh, probably remember that song. Uh, maybe some of the younger people, you, you, you might not uh, remember that song. Uh, but there, there was something in this song uh, because he said that his papa passed away and then his mother, you know, she kind of encouraged him uh, to continue working and uh, support the family. And, and so this is a deep song. And uh, one of the things that impressed me uh, with this song is, is it says right here, uh, he said, so years have passed and all the kids are grown. The angels took mama to a brand new home. Lord knows people, I shed tears, but my daddy's voice kept me through the years. So Clarence Carter, who uh, sang this song, I think somebody else actually wrote the song, but Clarence Carter, who sang this song, uh, and, and the person, they must have knew something about the Bible. They must have knew something about the Bible. And why do you say that? Because it says right here, so the years have passed and all the kids are grown. The angels took mama to a brand new home. Now, you know, that's biblical. And we find that in Luke chapter 16 and verse 22. And you remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus, and they both died. And notice what it said about the uh, uh, Lazarus, the poor man, uh, when he died. Notice what it said. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. So if, if we are going to talk about angels, we need to know what the Bible says, because there's a whole lot of stuff going out there, uh, going on out there that's not uh, biblical. Now, 
again, this this guy who wrote this song, he might not know anything else about the Bible. <laughs> you know, he he might he might not could tell he might not even be able to quote John three sixteen. Uh, but you know, one thing that we can look at is that he did get this right right here uh, because when we uh, pass away, uh, the angels uh, take us or usher us into the presence of the Lord. Uh, and that's, that's biblical. So when you, when you close your eyes in death, I don't know. Uh, I, I believe that when you close your eyes in death, that immediately like Miss Simpson, uh, who closed her eyes in death, like Shirley Gales, who closed her eyes in death, uh, that they woke up in the presence of the Lord. And, uh, the Bible tells us that, uh, it, it, this must be quick, quicker than quick. Uh, that the angels come and, and take us into God's presence. So this is what I'm saying. It's important to know uh, what the Bible says about angels so that if we want to write a song, that uh, we, we're going to have scripture to back up the song that we wrote. All right. So that's that's why, you know, I I, I had to go back and bring something out of, out of the 70s, right? Uh, so I, I, I love that song right there. I remember listening to it growing up. And, you know, I never did uh, understand because, you know, the words weren't clear to me uh, where it says the angels took mama to a brand new home. I I, I, I never did make out that part clearly uh, until, you know, I went back and read the lyrics and then, you know, I, I was able to see that. Now, you know, the other thing, too, that that we need to understand is that some major religions have been started based on so-called appearances of angels so muhammad where did, how did he get the quran you know uh, as, as far as what he says you know he didn't he didn't get it from revelation of the holy spirit he didn't get it by revelation of uh god but uh the origin of islam is placed around 610 uh, ce when muhammad a highly spiritual and religious man who spent months in praying and self-contemplation in a secluded cave near the town of Mecca. Uh, it is said that he received divine messages. The story is that one morning, Muhammad heard the voice of the angel Gabriel and through him, uh, through Gabriel, the angel, Allah spoke words of wisdom. And so these words were first recited to Muhammad, later to his disciples, and then recorded as texts in what we now know as the Quran. So according to uh, Muhammad, uh, he said that he got the uh, Quran through the revelation of the angel Gabriel. So again, you know, we see how is this affecting us? Well, when you look at it, uh, you know, what's one of the major religions in the world today? There are three major religions. Now, there's a whole bunch of religions, but there's three major religions in the world. Uh, and that's Christianity, uh, Judaism, and Islam. And so Islam, uh, its, it's religious writings is based on the revelation of an angel. So again, that's why, you know, one reason why it becomes important for us uh, to understand uh, angels. And we see another one. Uh, the angel Moroni uh, is an angel whom Joseph Smith reported as having visited him on numerous occasions beginning on September 21st, 1823. According to Smith, the angel was the guardian of the golden plates uh, buried in the hill of Cumorah near Smith's home in western New York. Latter-day Saints believe the plates were the source material for the Book of Mormon. An important figure in theology of Latter-day Saints movement, Moroni is featured prominently in Mormon architect and art. Uh, so uh, it's, it's said that uh, Joseph Smith, who uh, is the founder of the Mormon uh, religion, that he got his revelations uh, through the angel Moroni. So again, why, you know, it's, it's important that we understand uh, th this whole 
idea of angels and and what they actually do you know and and because here you again you see two major religions two major religions were started because of the appearance of an angel so uh we're going to look at and 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 deal with this why study the subject of angels you know why 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 should we study uh this subject uh first of all uh, we should study the subject of angels because the Bible has a lot to say about them, all right? Uh, when we look at the Old Testament, uh, angels are mentioned 103 times uh, in the Old Testament, and they are mentioned 93 times in the New Testament. At least 34 of the 66 books of the Bible talk about angels. So again, uh, you know, we, you know, we can't uh, cherry pick the word of God. We can't pick and choose uh, what we want to study. You know, uh, a, a lot of times people, you know, they just, they just want to study, uh, well, how can I, I be blessed? Or how can I prosper? Or how can I, I, I have uh, this? Or how can I have that? Uh, but uh, we need to understand that uh, God has given us his word. And we need to understand the whole counsel of God. And uh, as I go through this teaching on angels, uh, I, I'm going to try to make it as practical and relevant as possible uh, so that we understand, you know, how angels work in our everyday life. All right. Because they, they are part of our life. And, you know, some things that I'll, I'll point out today that we can clearly see how uh, angels are at work today. So why study uh, the subject of angels, because the Bible has a lot to say about them. Uh, why study the subject of angels? Because there seems to be an increase of interest in this topic. Uh, you know, it, it seems like uh, people want to get in touch with their more spiritual side. And so, you know, what, what do we see people talking about? We, they got spirit guides. And, and so what are their spirit guides? Their spirit guides are supposedly angels all right uh so you know you you hear all all these new age people and all these people that are into esoteric uh ism and how that you know they have this idea of uh you know i'm, I'm able to communicate with uh another realm i'm able to talk with uh people in 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 another world uh, I'm a, I'm, I have this guide that comes along and, and speaks to me and talks to me and tells me what to do. All right. So, you know, there's, there's a uh, increased interest in uh, the topic of angels. So, you know, we as Christians, you know, we need to be, again, I don't know if Clarence Carter wrote that song, uh, but we need to be like Clarence Carter, right? Uh, you know, if we're going to write a song about angels, we need to, you know, we need to, uh, now that's the, the one reference that he made in the song was about angels, that one, and he was right on that one right there. Now, again, he might be uh, wrong on everything else he thinks about the Bible, but uh, you know, on that one right there, he was right. And, and so we need to know uh, what the Bible says about angels. And if you look at how many people have uh, become obsessed with demon activities, uh, such as Ouija boards, uh, tarot cards, fortune telling, you know, all you got to do is uh, turn on your TV late at night and you can see people that uh, are, can tell your fortune. Uh, they'll, they'll be able to tell you what to do. And, you know, when you look at it, you know, they, they, they are summoning uh, spirits from another world. Uh, they, they are dealing with these angelic uh, beings. And so, you know, a lot of times people don't understand it, uh, but, you know, they are actually dealing with angels, evil angels. And, and there seems to be an obsession with these things today. And that's why, you know, if you got a Ouija board, you need to get it out of your house. Uh, you know, you need to get the horoscope out of your house. Uh, oh, Pastor Glaze, now you didn't uh, stop teaching and you didn't go on to preaching now. Uh, but all, all these things uh, are angelic. And, and they are, you know, evil spirits. They, they are uh, 
and, and you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about, uh, because some people believe that uh, evil spirits and demons are different. So uh, you definitely want to stay with us uh, throughout this teaching, because, you know, with, you know, those are some of the kind of things that we're going to talk about. You know, uh, you know, do we become angels when we get to heaven? Uh, you know, I'll say a little bit more uh, about that. Uh, so, you know, uh, we, we want to understand the nature of uh, of angels and even a evil angels. You know, we we're not just going to talk about the good ones. We're going to talk about evil angels, too. And so there is even uh, also a, a great cultural interest uh, in this subject. Uh, Hollywood is constantly coming out with movies and television shows that deal with angels and demons, right? You remember Touched by an Angel, Angel in the Outfield, The Preacher's Wife, and, and we can go on and on. Uh, all these movies that uh, and TV shows that come out that deal with angels. And you know the sad thing is that a lot of people are taking their theology from these shows. You know, instead of, instead of getting into the Bible, instead of getting into the word, you know, we'd rather watch a television program that's uh, presenting an angel uh, and they can do all kinds of things, right? These angels, it's almost, even some of these angels and, and we're gonna study this, uh, they almost give them supernatural uh, power, the same as, as God. They, they put them on the same level as God, all right? And so, you know, we want to, we want to understand that. So as, as a believer, you know, why should we study the subject of angels? Because there is an increased interest in this topic. Just look, just look at what, you know, this new age movement, uh, this uh, uh, satanic movement and Hollywood. And uh, a lot of people are taking their theology from Hollywood. And, you know, we, we definitely uh, don't want to get our theology from home. Uh, I was going to say from Homewood. Yeah, we want to get it from Homewood, uh, you know, Bethany Baptist Church. And there are other churches in Homewood that uh, got good theology. Uh, so no, we, we don't, we, we want to get our theology from Homewood and that, you know, the, the good churches in Homewood that are preaching the word of God. Uh, but we don't want to, uh, get our theology from Hollywood and, you know, just talk to, talk to some of your grandkids, right? Talk to some of your kids and, 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 and ask them about, you know, what do they think about angels? Just ask them that question. You know, what, what do you think about angels? And I guarantee you that a lot of them will tell you what they've seen in movies. And so we don't want to take our theology from movies, but we want to take it from the word of God. Why should we study the subject of angels? Uh, because there's an unseen battle that's going on around us. I don't know if you realize it, but you know the battle is not against flesh and blood. And, and Paul makes that very clear in Ephesians chapter six. So, you know, when, when I think that, you know, I'm, I'm fighting against my neighbor or I think I'm fighting against my coworker or I think that I'm fighting against, you know, one of my relatives, that's not where the battle is. You know, I mean, it, it might eventually uh, manifest itself in that, but there, you know, there, there's unseen things going on all around us. And that's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter six and uh, verse 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So where is, where is the wrestle at? You know, where is the battle at? In principalities. You know, this, this means demons who have given a position to rule over certain areas. And we see this in the book of Daniel. That now, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Uh, I, I don't necessarily believe that there's a, a, a theology where there's a demon behind every rock. You know, some people say that there's the, the, the demon of cocaine and there's the demon of alcohol and there's the demon of lust. You know, I don't necessarily know that, you know, I'm, I'm going to go that far. But the Bible is clear that there are uh, certain evil spirits, uh, demonic powers that have been appointed uh, places uh, to rule. And you know, the sad thing is uh, that these, these demonic forces can actually come into your home and, and rule in your home. Uh, I remember 
when I first came to Bethany. Me and uh, Deacon Bill Moore, some of you may uh, remember Bill Moore. Uh, you know, we were called to go uh, to this lady's house because uh, she wanted us to come and pray over her house. She felt that, you know, there was some demon influence uh, in her house. And so me and Bill, uh, you know, we went, uh, actually she called me, but I wasn't going by myself. Y'all know me, right? I, was, I wasn't going by myself. So I asked uh, Deacon Bill Moore if he would go. And, and so we went and uh, we were there and we, uh, as soon as we got in the house uh, and, and, and you can, because I know when I get ready to say it might seem far-fetched, but I'm, I'm glad there was somebody there to witness the, this beside me. Uh, and we sat down, a wind, wind, W-I-N-D, uh, came through the window and there was a picture of Jesus on the wall and it blew the picture off the wall. <laughs> I said, wow. You know, this thing is serious. And then I ended up getting sick. And I had to go spend most of the time there in, in the ladies' bathroom. And so I knew that, you know, we were under heavy demonic uh, attack during that visit. And so we need to be able to recognize those things. You know, my wife and I, you know, we were praying uh, the other morning. And, you know, one of the things that we prayed, uh, we said, Lord, let everyone that comes through the doors of this house, you know, feel the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Everyone that comes into this house, might they know that, that, that God is glorified. Everyone that comes through these doors, might they, they sense that there's a powerful uh, presence here. Uh, you know, what's that song said? There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's the testimony that I want to have that when people come to my house, that uh, they might understand that there's a, a, a wonderful uh, influence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I, I used to do a revival uh, down in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia every year for uh, Dr. Alan McFarlane. And uh, a lot of times, you know, he would uh, want to put me up in the hotel. And uh, I was glad uh, when they didn't put me up in the hotel and I was able to stay at his house. And one of the reasons I love staying at his house was because I man, I just felt the, the spirit of God and I felt the power of God uh, when I was in his home. Uh, man, it was, it was, it, it was wonderful. I mean, it, 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 it truly was wonderful. And you know, the flip thing is true also, is that you can, if, if, if you don't understand uh, angels and, and demons, you know, you, you can have a, a wicked influence in your house. And, uh, and, and if you can't, you know, be sensitive to that, you can't recognize that, you know, it could be, you know, upsetting the equilibrium of your house, you know, and, 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 and it, it may be that somebody in your house, maybe they're bringing in some things that have attracted uh, 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 evil spirits. I, I, you know, again, uh, people will say, now, nah, Pastor Glaze, he, he done went off. He, he, done, he done stone lost his mind. But, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, is that, you know, people can attract uh, evil spirits in their life. And, and so, you know, we see here that uh, there are certain principalities, uh, places where people, where these demonic spirits rule. Uh, it says powers. Uh, this Greek word means authority. And this indicates rulership powers. It means they have in being invested with the authority uh, to rule. Uh, the demonic princes of Persia and Greece in Daniel chapter 10 were given authority to rule. So we see that again, you know, this emphasizes the fact that uh, demonic spirits have been given authority to rule in certain areas, uh, to rule in certain areas uh, against the rulers of darkness. Uh, these demonic spirits uh, are rulers of darkness in this world. 
the dark places of this world where demonic activity abounds. These evil spirits are rulers who bring darkness uh, to these areas. Uh, I, I remember, and some of you may remember this, uh, this was uh, way back uh, before the uh, pandemic when we were uh, actually having Bible study uh, at the church. And uh, I remember I was teaching, and I, I think I was teaching on this passage right here. And uh, I, I said that there are certain places in the world where uh, it seems like they've been given over to the to demonic spirits and, and to rulers of darkness. And I happened to mention, I said, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's been documented that a lot of places in Haiti, you know, where they have, you know, all witchcraft and voodoo and all that, uh, that, you know, these are some of these dark places uh, in the world. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know that there was a, a lady in the Bible study that day and she was from Haiti. And so she was getting ready to say something. I said, oh, I, she probably being from Haiti. She probably gonna get up and say, Pastor Glaze, you know what you said is not right. Haiti is a beautiful. And she got up and she began to testify about how that these spirits, you know, through witchcraft, through uh, putting curses on people, uh, how that these things were prevalent uh, in Haiti. And, and she that's where she was from. And so she actually uh, testified, you know, to the fact that, you know, this was going on. And so, you know, we see here that rulers of darkness, that, that that's why we need to understand, you know, uh, I'm getting ready to start a series after right now I'm doing a series on Sunday morning on the will of God. Uh, but after I'm done with that, I'm going to do a series on spiritual warfare. And uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about is, is how do we deal as Christians? You know, how do we understand this battle? And how do we fight this battle? You know, uh, you need to understand spiritual warfare. Uh, and, and so I'm going to break it down, make it simple so that we know how to fight uh, against these dark uh, forces of, of the world. And then finally, uh, you know, we should study the subject of angels, again, because of the unseen battle going on around us. Uh, notice what Paul said. He said spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Uh, we are wrestle, wrestling against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. This is the most disgusting form of immorality and debauchery. So some examples of this would be sex slaves, trafficking, child pornography. This is what Paul was talking about when he said spiritual wickedness in, in heavenly places. And, and so we see this going on all around us, right? I mean, if you're not careful, again, uh, this stuff can come right into your home and, and begin to, uh, to corrupt and defile. Uh, so, you know, why study this subject? Because we need to understand the battle that's going on around us, the unseen battle. And uh, as we understand that, then we can fight in that battle a little bit better. Uh, why do we need to study uh, angels? Because of misconceptions about angels. There are a lot of misconceptions uh, about angels. Uh, some people say that angels aren't real, you know, that they're fairy tales or that they're mythical. But we're going to see uh, as we study that angels are real. And I just want to say this, uh, you should have the notes. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, these, these things are also listed in the notes uh, for you. Uh, angels are cupids. You ever see those little uh, chubby cherubs that uh, fly around and uh, have a little arrow with hearts and they're, they're shooting these arrows and causing people to fall in love, right? Now, I, you know, one of the things that these, some of these myths, I'm going to go back and tell you where they got started too. Okay, so when we look at, when we get into uh, the study, I'm going to go back and, and talk about these things and tell you how, how these things got started. Uh, angels float around heaven on clouds. Uh, you know, that's another uh, misconception about uh, angels. Uh, angels have two wings. All right, how, how many of us have believed that? How many, how many of us have seen that? 
Uh, so we're going to look at that. You know, do angels have two wings? Uh, when a person dies, they go to heaven and become an angel. Now, this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions that God's people believe. And I've heard people say this time and time again, uh, especially when somebody dies. And you know what? I've said this before. And that is when a person is dealing with the death of a loved one and they say something like, you know, well, they went to uh, heaven and they're, they're an angel now, or they went to heaven and they got their wings. Well, you know what? Now, this is me. This is Pastor Glaze. Now, there might be another preacher that might not do it like me. But I think that that's not the right time to correct bad theology. You know what? So, you know, I just go ahead because evidently that might be what that person needs at that time to give them strength. So, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not based on scripture, but, you know, sometimes that helps people to uh, to make it through. Uh, just talking to someone uh, and they told me their loved one died and they said, well, I know that my loved one got their wings. Uh, well, again, you know, when, you know, and, 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 and so this is why it's important to study, you know, angels so that we are basing our beliefs on the right things. Uh, and, and so one of the things that we're going to study is that when God created angels, he created all the angels at one time. He, he didn't create angels. And then when people die, they go to heaven and become angels. God created all the angels at one time. So uh, we're going to look at that. And we're going to talk about uh, why uh, your loved one did not become an angel when they went to heaven. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to look at that. Now, some people will tell you there are no guardian angels. Uh, there's a lot of theologians that don't believe that, that there are no guardian angels. Uh, but we're going to look, again, we're going to look at scripture. You know, does the scripture uh, talk about the fact that there are guardian angels? So I, I'll just give you this little preview. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, it says that uh, angels are spirits that are sent forth to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation. All right. But we're going to look at that because there's some people that will tell you there's no such thing as guardian angels. Oh, here goes one right here. Do angels have a special language uh, that you remember in uh, 1 Corinthians, the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul said, uh, uh, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels, right? So some people have uh, jumped on that verse and, uh, and they said that angels have a special language. And then, you know, they even talk about, you know, a, a heavenly prayer language that angels uh, have, uh, that angels speak. So, you know, do angels have a special language that, that they speak? Here goes one right here. Angels wear halos. Okay, we're going to talk about where that came from. You know, do angels have halos? Uh, you know, and uh, I heard uh, somebody say that uh, some of the saints have halos. And then another person said, and, and the, the devil's horns are protruding out through the halo. All right. So, uh, you know, do, do angels have halos? Uh, are angels to be worshipped? You know, should we uh, worship? angels and then uh are angels eternal beings well i think you know you, i've already answered kind of answered that question uh but some people will say that angels have existed forever you know so we're going to look at you know are they eternal beings and then are fallen mm -hmm. angels and demons different uh you know there are some people uh they believe in what's called the uh, gap theory. And, and what that is, 
is between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, that there was a whole race of people that existed and, and that uh, demons actually are the souls of evil people that existed at that time. So are, are, are demons and fallen angels different? You, we know that when Satan fell from heaven, that he took a third of the angels with him. So are these creatures different? You know, did uh, the angels that fell from heaven, a third of the angels that went with Satan, are they different than demons? You know, did they, the demons come from a, a pre-existing uh, culture? Uh, well, we're going to look at that and we're going to see, you know, where exactly uh, demons come from. And then, uh, why, are the, why are there so many uh, misconceptions about angels? And, you know, you, you know that I've been hitting, hitting on this all the time I've been teaching this afternoon. And that is ignorance of the Bible and misunderstanding of the Bible. You know, that, that's, that's why there's so many misconceptions. So when, when you hear people talk, like if, if, if I sit down or if I watch a TV show and, and it, it has angels in it or, you know, some, somebody touched by an angel or, you know, uh, demons, uh, you know, I, you know as, a, as a Christian, you know, I should be able to sit there and kind of evaluate uh, where this lines up with the Bible and, uh, and to see that, you know, uh, this, you know this, this is not even biblical. Uh, and, and so, you know, as Christians, you know, we need to know our scriptures. We need to know our Bible. So uh, one reason that they or two reasons that there are misconceptions about angels is because of the ignorance of the Bible. People don't know the Bible. And then people misunderstand uh, the Bible. They take it out of context. You know, for for instance, uh, you know. It, it says that uh, there are male and female angels right people say that you know there are male and female angels well where do you get that from you know uh well, well you, gabriel and michael well you know it it never it never identifies and, and we'll see this is why this is why we need to study right uh it never identifies the gender of those it just it just gave them masculine names right but you know, Jesus said that angels are asexual, right? And, and what is that? That they, they are neither male nor female, okay? So uh, angels uh, don't have uh, uh, sexual uh, genders. Uh, now, they may be referred to in the masculine uh, 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 noun, but angels you know, are not male or female. So again, uh, you know, people that say that they are, there are male and female angels uh, based on the name uh, Michael and Gabriel, uh, you know, that's a misunderstanding of the Bible. Uh, and then uh, we see belief in man-made conceptions. Uh, a lot of people have concocted uh, their own ideas about uh angels and what they think angels are and even uh again you know i, I i'm gonna say this again that you know we we get our theology from a, a from the strength from some of the strangest places and so you know we need to get it from uh from the word of god and not from what people have uh have conjured up and and what they have uh made up uh so i think that's uh yeah okay so uh So that's uh that's that's what I have today, uh, and you know next week uh, we're going to look at the uh, origin of angels. Uh, we're going to look at the the function of angels uh, and and how uh, they operate. And so you know we we have titled uh, this series uh, "Angels: The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly." All right, because they're good angels. They are bad angels, and then they are ugly angels. 
And so all you need to know uh, from the Bible about angels. So we pray that you would stick with us uh, as we go through this study and that we, you know, we're going to teach you a lot about angels. Okay. Okay, Vicki has her hand up. Vicki. Okay, I had two questions, but you kind of answered one. Uh, 